Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I wanted to talk uh, very briefly today about vitamin D. It's something I've covered uh, extensively before. Uh, we've been over vitamin D. Uh, there is a growing awareness that uh, many people have uh, levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin uh, D, which is the active metabolite of vitamin D in humans, uh, have levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D, which is, which is too low. Um, the reason for this is not fully understood, but it's likely to do with the fact that humans, uh, particularly living in Western societies, don't uh, expose themselves to sunlight enough. Uh, there's growing awareness that supplements are needed throughout the winter. Um, I'm a big advocate of vitamin D supplements. I'm a big advocate of taking a vitamin D supplement throughout the winter. I think the research uh, has, has shown that those people that do take a vitamin D supplement, uh, they are able to maintain their vet, uh, levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D much better uh, than those who do not take a supplement. And I think research has shown that you cannot really maintain those levels, the levels that you can uh, you can ob obtain in the summer. You can't maintain those levels through the winter using uh, by consuming food. You have to really take a supplement. Now that's not a problem for those people that live near the equator. They get the sun all year round. Their vitamin D levels tend to be fine. But as you move towards uh, more northerly uh, or southerly latitudes, you tend to find, obviously, when you go into the winter months, the sun, the angle of incidence drops, uh, the strength of the sun uh, becomes much weaker, uh, and you're not able to maintain those levels. So I'm a big advocate of taking supplements throughout the winter months. Um, and I think taking those supplements uh, is starting to, to catch on in the mainstream. Uh, there's a big increase in the amount of uh, vitamin D products that are available, uh, and there's a growing awareness awareness uh, in the mainstream that those uh, those supplements may be beneficial. However, having said that, I'm not a big advocate of taking vitamin D all throughout the year. Uh, I take my vitamin D throughout the winter, uh, but in the summer, I try not to take supplements. Now, if I go through a particular, uh, you know, maybe a week and there's, I haven't exposed myself to the sun, I will take a supplement. But generally, in the summer, I will try to get my vitamin D from the sun. Um, now the reason for this is twofold. Firstly, going out in the sun does has other health benefits. I believe the sun uh, is very important to humans, and going out into the sun uh, has uh, not only physiological effects, but also I think uh, affects your mental health considerably. Uh, your eyes obviously uh, pass the light that they uh, receive from your uh, from your retina. It goes to the brain, and it has an effect in the brain. It does things to your sleep wake cycle. It has an effect on hormones, uh, and I think going into the sun is very important. The other reason that I think that getting your vitamin D from the sun is very important is because there is a cutoff switch. You can't overdose on vitamin D if you get your vitamin D uh, from the sun. Your body will make as much vitamin D as it requires. It's made from cholesterol in the skin. The action of UV light on cholesterol causes a, a series of metabolic changes that converts it into vitamin D. Uh, and you cannot overproduce vitamin D from the sun. Once your body has enough vitamin D, that mechanism ceases and no more vitamin D will be produced. Now, the problem with taking supplements is in the winter, unless you have continual blood tests, it's very difficult to know how much vitamin D to take. So most people guess the recommendation is anywhere from 2000 to 5000 IU a day. But that depends on body size. It depends on what you eat. It depends on the form of vitamin D you take. There's many factors that can prevent um, vitamin D being absorbed. There are many factors that increase the absorption of vitamin D. So it's really guesswork unless you have a blood test every week to monitor your vitamin D levels, which let's face it, no one really, unless you're maybe an elite athlete and have access to constant medical care uh, or you're living in a hospital, most people don't have access to that type of, uh, of information. So most people guess. Uh, and obviously the danger is then that you will either take too little or you'll take too much. Now, if you take too much and as long, if you keep the reasonable uh, the dose reasonable, it's unlikely that that toxicity uh, will affect you over the winter months. Uh, if you're taking slightly too much vitamin D, it takes a while for toxicity to build up. So in the summer, if you stop taking the vitamin D supplements, you go out in the sun and you get your vitamin D from the sun, you will allow your levels to rebalance and therefore the risk of toxicity is decreased. If you're taking too little, 
and you go out into the sun in the summer, you will boost your levels up to the level that they're required because the sun is a much more efficient way of producing vitamin D than taking supplements. You can produce many tens of thousands of IU by going into the into a, into the hot sun for a few minutes uh, compared with, obviously, you'd have to take many, many tablets to get that amount of vitamin D. So I'm a big advocate of it during the summer months when the, when the spring comes around, I'm a big advocate of going out into the sun and getting your vitamin D if you can from the sun and that means stop taking your supplements. You could still take a small amount of vitamin D. For example, uh, most multivitamins have a small amount of vitamin D. Uh, the levels are very very low it's very unlikely that will be enough vitamin D and you can then top that up uh, by exposing yourself to the sun so it, it in the United Kingdom the northern hemisphere we're now coming around to uh, to summer we're coming through spring and into summer and therefore the sun is starting to get hot enough now to be able to to allow you to, to generate and synthesize your own vitamin D so I would now recommend that, that you start to taper off your supplements uh, and you start to get your vitamin D by exposing your skin uh, to the sun um, I hope that was interesting. If you have any comments or interesting links that you want to share, please leave them in the comments box below. And as always, I will try to get back to you and I will see you next week for another video. And in the meantime, take care.